What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to color wood. Now as you can see right here I got a like a pattern of wood going on here. Um, I try to imagine it as like a dock, you know, like the dock where you go on when you're going fishing. Try to imagine it looking something like that. So I purposely left this plank of wood blank so I can show you guys how to color wood and I'm going to do it similar to, to these ones that I did here. Um, don't mind these two because they're pretty much off the page. So I'm not going to make this plank of wood look something like these. I mean, these ones are in better detail, so I'm going to show you how to do these specifically. And throughout this video, I'm going to show you how to do it using Copic markers. So the Copic markers you will need for this video are E13. Um, I have this as a Copic Classic Marker and a Copic Sketch Marker. The reason I have it as a Copic Original Marker is because I'm working on a um, fairly large paper and I'm filling in a pretty large and broad area. So I need a marker with like a big chisel tip to it. I mean, if you're working on anything smaller then a brush tip could also work. That's why I have this one because I'm going to be blending at some point throughout the video. So that's why I have it as a Copic Sketch Marker as well. So these two are pretty much the same. Again, it's E13 and a couple other colors that I'm going to use for the shading and any other details are E79, E15, E29, and E18. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a base color and that's what this Copic original marker is for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scribble in and um, when you're doing this, um, don't mind the streaks because wood does have a fair amount of texture to it. So you can leave it streaky if you want to, but I want to make it a little bit smooth. Because those lines that we that I added uh, prior to making this video, that'll actually convey some sort of texture to it without needing to add any colored pencil whatsoever. And now what we want to do, we want to get the actual blending in first before we add these lines indicating the texture. So what I'm going to use for the blending, I'm going to use E15 and E18. E18 will be the darkest color, so I'm going to lay that aside for now. Um, for now I'm going to use E15 to go like right around the outer regions of it. Um, this portion right here you don't need to worry about just yet because that's where we're going to make a little bit darker because E15 is not that dark uh, from the E13. So that's why we want to save this space for a different but darker color. So just get the outer regions of this plank of wood also around the cracks too. And then we're going to go around again with our E13 and blend that back in. So now that's looking pretty smooth, um, I just want to smoothen out some streaks a little bit. I know I said don't mind it, but this is the way that I like to do it. If you want to do it this way, then that's also fine. So now that we got our E18 out, we can go ahead on the darkest parts. Because as you can see, the darkest parts of this plank of wood and this one um, will be over here. So um, that's why on this other side, you're not seeing much of darkness on that side. So I like to pretend that's some shading a bit. So we're gonna look at it that way. Um, there's another way to look at it. I like to think of it as you're putting it together like a bridge and like this one came first and then this one and then this one. You can look at it that way also, but the lighting will be up here, which means the shading will be on the right hand side. So we can take our E15 and blend back into the base color. We won't need to do it to a lot of parts of this wood because again it's only on one side which makes it easier. And then we can go back with our E13 and blend that back in. Okay now that we got some shades and let's go ahead and add some shading to the bottom part which is um, sort of like the other side of the wood. I don't know how else to explain it, but it's gonna be a lot of shading down here because since the lighting is pretty much up here, like that's what I at least tried to say earlier, there's gonna be lots of light up here, so we're gonna see a lot of the base color, but since the light isn't shining upon this area down here, it's gonna be a darker variation of this color. 
So what I chose to use for this color, I chose to use E18 as well. And I got some darker colors that I can use for um, adding some textures like these lines towards the bottom part. And I'll get to that in a second. Um, again, you don't need to worry a lot about the streaks. And you don't need to make it uh, very, very dark. You can just make it dark enough so you can tell the viewer that this shading down here will be a darker variation of this initial color. And the color that I'm going to use to um, add some lines down here and some textures, I'm going to use E79. And you can add lines here and there. And I like to have it following this pattern. Like say the lines are coming here and there. Like say up and down and um, I don't know the word for it. Um, you see the lines coming in like a vertical pattern. Like say you got lines going this way and this way, up and down or whatever. I was about to have the idea where you can have the lines going this and that way, like horizontally down this way, but that wouldn't really make sense. So that's why, um, so this way would actually make more sense. I mean, it's a good idea to think of that, to separate kind of like the patterns if you plan on adding some to some wood, but this way would make more sense. Um, and if you want, you can go back with your E18 and kind of blend that E79 in. And this is what it'll look like. And if you want, you can go darker. Let me try to grab another color. I'll grab E79, or sorry, E49. You see, that's a much better color. Yeah, that can be more seen on camera. I mean, you can still see the E79, but the E49 is uh, a bit darker. Okay, now that that's finished, we can go on to adding the actual lines. So the color that I'm going to use to add the lines is E29. So I'm going to add lines here and there, just like we did down here. And some of the lines that I inked right here, we can use those and just use like a brush stroke and kind of flick up like so. I'll just add a few curves here and there, but try not to add too many because you don't want to make them too close because then it'll look kind of clustered. I don't really like that kind of look. I mean, you can if you want to, but that's something I personally don't like looking at. So yeah, just the brush tip would really help if, um, but yeah, the brush tip would really help in this situation. So I'm just gonna add a few lines here and there. Like so. Okay, and you can pretty much leave it just like this. But what I wanna do is, I know I didn't mention this in the beginning when I was showing you what colors you need, but what I wanna do is add some highlights. So what you can do is you can use a gel pen to add some white highlights, but I'll personally use um, a bright, brown colored pencil like a beige colored colored pencil because um, this is a light colored pencil and this brand of colored pencil uh, acts like paint so it'll work over top of this layer of marker that we laid down earlier I mean you can also use white but lately I'm trying to stick to lighter variations of the colors that I'm initially using so like say this is a brown color that we're using so I'm gonna use a light light brown so let's just go and the way I like to do it is I like to go and Follow those same lines with this colored pencil. Like maybe you can see it right here. It helps you get that grainy texture in the wood. If the lines don't help, it kind of helps. But when you're adding highlights, especially with the lighter variation of your base color, it kind of makes your drawing feel complete. Like, but I'll probably save that for a future video the many highlights you can add to the wood and maybe I'm gonna try to add some down here as well you can probably see more of that because this part is darker this one's a, this one has a fairly light color going on here so you can probably see it more you can probably see it better down here and I'm gonna add some darker parts to down there so I'm gonna take my uh, e79 actually And there, that's how you color wood with Copic markers and adding textures and highlights with a colored pencil. So if you like this video and you find it useful, give it a like and a comment. 
subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I got my nigga like